Tell Shaq Pack, it's your boy D Shaq. We back with another video on the time on the channel. And today <laughs> we're gonna be reacting to who makes better movies, Marvel versus DC, Middle Ground from Jubilee, dude. You know, I'm not going to lie, but like on the movie side, just like movie strictly, Marvel is killing the game. Like it's it's not even a contest, bro. Like at all. Snyderverse was good. That like like Justice League Snyderverse, that was good. I mean, I said Snyderverse. Justice League Snyder's cut, that was good, but it it I say at most that movie is about Doctor Strange range, to be honest, and, and how good it was. But yeah, bro, like, Marvel is, on the movie side, Marvel is killing it. On the TV, like, on the TV shows, I'm not gonna lie, I give that to DC, because they have some, DC has had some fire TV shows, but, uh, and then comics, I don't know, it's, it, I ain't gonna lie, it's, in the comics, it's kind of a draw for me, I'm not gonna lie, but movie-wise, it's definitely Marvel, in my opinion, like, it, 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 it's, it's, it's not even a contest. If you, if you ask me, but, you know, everybody has their own opinion, and we're gonna see other people's opinions, so yeah, let's get into it. The original Spider-Man were not good. Like, I grew up watching those, and I was not a huge fan. The Tobey No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, Tobey. What? Why? Yo! Okay, look. Out of, out of those, to out of the three Tobey Maguire movies, in my opinion, it goes Spider-Man 2 as the, as the best. Spider-Man, the first, the, the first Spider-Man, and then Spider-Man 3 is the worst. Like, Spider-Man 3, it was just, I don't know, it was just bad, bro. It was just bad. I'm not even gonna lie, cause they, it's like it felt like it felt rushed. It felt like they 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 were trying to do too much in one film. That's 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 my feeling on it. I feel like they were trying to do too much in one film. Amazing Spider Man, best Spider Man, best Spider Man, better than Tom Holland. Sorry, Tom Holland, I love you, bro, but Andrew Garfield was a better Spider Man in my opinion, bro. Like the 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 first Amazing Spider Man was good. Second the second Amazing Spider Man was even better, bro. But, you know, the MCU Spider-Man, he's pretty good, too. I give Tom Holland. I take Tom Holland over Tobey Maguire. I'm sorry. I just do. And I've, and I've watched every single Spider-Man movie in existence at least 20 times. So, I know what I'm talking about. But, you know, everybody has their own opinion. So, uh, you know, people believe that Tobey Maguire is the best Spider-Man. Some people believe Tom Holland is the best Spider-Man. I've been back at my you know? fandom since I was tiny. You know, the biggest impact, I think, for me has been Batman. When people of course, know the comics, facts. they know what you know, DC's bringing to the table. Of course. I can see how they can defend, like, their video games and their comics, but I don't know how they're going to back up the movies. No shade, but their movies aren't that great. Ultimately, you see a very cookie-cutter pattern of how Marvel makes their films versus DC, which is super gritty, super dark. I will die on that. I mean, I really mean, apologizing and loving some of these. I mean, that's more that's than most people should. I, I think my only expectation really is to kind Why, of understand. Can can it where can, the can it pause? Thank you. Uh, I, I'm gonna say like gritty and like you know dark. That's DC in general. Like that's how they've always had this. I wouldn't say Marvel is like friend, family friendly all the time, but for the most part, Marvel is family friendly. But DC, it's always had that, you know, that niche for being, you know, dark and gritty and gloomy and all stuff. Like, for God's sake, one of their best heroes, Batman, literally lives in a city that, that like, he, he fights in the dark, bro. And he, he, he be out here, like, you, you know what Batman be out here doing, bro. Like, come on, never. <laughs> you know what he be How out here doing. How do connect with someone like Superman, who, to me, has the personality of a brick? Whoa. Okay, okay, interesting take, interesting, interesting take. Okay, My see. name is Ryan, uh, I'm a philosophy major at university, I studied art uh, history as well. The more I think about it, those things tie in a lot for the reason why I love comics so much. Hey, I'm Will, I'm a lifelong, I would say comic book fan, but but really DC Homer, as my friend would call me. An apologist, some would say, to a certain degree. <laughs> I'm Matt, I'm and dead. I am as well a DC guy. I'm actually trying to get into voice acting, voiceover. Oh, uh, okay. these animated shows and whatnot, it's really inspiring. That's a W, that's a characters W. Characters come to life through voice and whatnot, so that's what I'm trying to do. Hi, I'm Sarah. Marvel's pretty much always been like my favorite genre of movies. I love watching all the movies. I really love cinematography and I love how they're always played out. So yeah, I'm a Marvel fan. Yeah. I'm Nick and I like Marvel so much that I bought a 3D printer and started printing a bunch of props for it. <laughs> so I've got oh, a yeah. four foot storm breaker oh, yeah. sitting in my room, oh, yeah. not doing anything. <laughs> I'm Chris. Um, I'm a Marvel fan. Um, I wish I could say super fan. Um, just within the recent years, I've been getting like deep and deeper into it. So there's some things I may not know about, but I'm cultured and rotted. 
Like, uh, I've been watching Mar like I've been watching like superhero movies in general and like all that good stuff like Marvel and DC alike. I've been watching since I was a little kid. But Marvel is what really stuck with me. Like, I really like the stories with Marvel. And not to say that DC doesn't have good stories. I just feel like Marvel has done a better job, to be honest. There we are, sucking it around. <laughs> when it comes to movies, I'm talking about movies. Marvel is only considered better because of the movie. Nah. Mm, that's... No, nah, that's nah, I, I don't I don't I don't think I don't think it's just that unless they're comic book fanatics I don't hear anybody talking about the comics let alone the shows even the games or anything I only hear the movies thank you for being the only one here because right? <laughs> it is challenging I think right now to be a DC fan because of that feeling socially the conversation is Marvel oh, yeah. so extremely that every time DC puts out a movie it's like almost expected that you're supposed to sh on right, right because it's not as good they did it wrong. Now, have they stumbled along the way? Tons of times. Mm -hmm. But I get Like, this hold on, hold on. I get, I get what he's saying now. I'm, I'm letting him talking. But I just want to bring up an example. Green Lantern, the 20, I don't was, was it 2014 that it came out? 2011, one of those years. The Green Lantern movie with Ryan Reynolds. I thought that movie was going to be so good. And when I was a kid, I did. I, I thought the movie was great. But when I, when I, wa when I watched it recently, like, it's not a, it's not that good of a movie. I'm not gonna lie, like it's a it's a subpar movie. If I'm being completely honest, like if I'm being my most critical, like I try I when I when I watch movies, I try not to be that critical about it. I just I just try to enjoy the movie, enjoy the story, and all that good stuff. But if I if I really like want to be like really critical on a movie, to be honest, Green Lantern was one of the like the most subpar movies that they've made. One's entering into scene. Like, I feel like they could have did way better. Vulnerable and experience what they're being given. And that's it's recency bias, and then, right? Oh, I, know, I know I'm talking a lot. But then, but then on the Marvel side, they've also done that with Fantastic Four, the movie that came out in, what, 2016, 2015, one of those years, with Michael B. Jordan in it. I thought that was going to be great. And then I did. I, I did think it was great to some extent. But when I watched it back, I'm like, okay, this movie is, it's, it's, it's literally on a level as Green Lantern. It's that to par. Like, yeah. Right, because Christopher Reeve was Superman launched, but then you also think about the Batman, so Michael Keaton, right, mm -hmm. Jack Nicholson, and, and then even Batman Forever with Val Kilmer. Maybe <laughs> not so much after that, you know, but there was no Marvel movies at the time. The Dark Knight kind of faded into into the background when people talk about DC movies. And it's mm -hmm. like, those were great films. Of course. I mean, we don't have the Marvel Cinematic Excellent Universe, movies. in my opinion, without Batman Begins. All right, disagree, <laughs> come forward. I'm still on your side, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Did you forget we were here? <laughs> the movies, the TV shows, the video games, the comic books, the books, when you oversimplify it to one aspect, you're immediately erasing thousands of people's hard work and not giving them the credit that they deserve as they add to the rest of the brand. I guess I'm thinking, could you argue that simply because of the MCU, more people care? It used to be that yeah, to be a course. nerd back, even in the 90s, because I love Spider-Man, X-Men, all that stuff from the 90s. Doing cosplay, when I was doing cosplay, people yelling at me, saying stupid, dressing yeah. up in movies, all kinds of stuff. Now cosplayers get millions of followers, like on Instagram. The MCU actually made nerds cool. Yeah. <laughs> and so when I think of better, I think like, kind of to your point, detracts from all the like suffering of the nerds that got kicked <laughs> and shoved in their closet. Real good. Yeah. Yeah. To get here. So I'm now that the MCU <laughs> exists, I'm like, oh, now you want right. to say it's yeah. cool. Okay, fine, yeah. I do believe some of the comics do better than some of the Marvel stuff that is out. Like with all the Spider-Man, the original Spider-Man were not good. Like I grew up watching those and I was not a huge fan. Wait, the 90s? Tobey to 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 No, 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 yeah, yeah, Tobey. What? I did what? not. What? what? You yeah. see how all of them are saying what I feel the same? Like, like, I, no, I honestly, I lo like, I love those movies, but j like, if I'm, like I said, if I'm being my most critical, they were not better than Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. I'm sorry, they just weren't. He's uh, worse than Andrew Garfield? <laughs> I see those movies as like corny perfection. It's like but absolute it's corny. cheese. Like you said, it's corny. Right, I love that. <laughs> he didn't give me that representation. I'm an awkward teen. He was like a very just dark and like brooding, like more DC. He just was very 
not awkward how I wanted to see Peter Parker. You're telling me that Spider-Man 3 dance wasn't awkward to was you? That was that that was that was the worst part of Spider-Man like 3. Dark, Sorry, it just mm -hmm. was. Right now, everyone wants going on everyone right now. just wants happy stories. Yeah, everything that's going on right now, you don't want to see even darker. I want the pressure personified. Yeah, exactly. I think DC kind of shows people like what they already see in humanity. They're the like, wow, are our cities actually like this? Like, is this actually happening? I feel like people kind of get scared and they're like, yeah, I don't want to deal with that. Our characters are more relatable. I feel like, I feel like you could give that to Marvel. I feel like you can give that to Marvel because honestly, like <laughs> Marvel, I mean, it's, it's, it's based off like Marvel has real cities. You know, I feel like I feel like their characters are a little bit more relatable to DC because just because of the fact that you know it's this like Marvel is more family friendly. I feel like like nobody nobody's nobody can really relate to Batman with his parents dying and then he just becomes this you know he he becomes Batman or with anything else. I mean, you know, in in different ways, uh, you know, you can you can relate to DC characters. I just feel like they can give that to Marvel, in my opinion. It's just the fact that, especially like me growing up, that I could just look at like these different heroes. Like I was like, I'm not built like no Captain America, but I can relate to him in the heart. It's what yeah. matters. And so I'm just like, just just seeing every character. I'm like, oh, wait, that's me. Oh, wait, that, that could be me. Oh, that could be. Me. And I'm just like, I've just experienced that with Marvel. And that's how I was yeah. like, let me just run up in here real quick. I've always, I've always experienced that, that with Marvel so too. So relatable as a teenager and seeing another teenager get all these superpowers and he's like I'm just a kid like I'm just trying to go to school like I, just, I need a break it's kind of a combination between the comics the TV shows the the MCU in total when you humanize a character first and then introduce their abilities yeah. you not only give the audience time to relate to them and attach themselves to the character but you give them an opportunity to see them pre you know superpower pre you know amazingness things like that you know just make marvel just a bit more relatable to me I, I i feel him on that i feel him on that most definitely there is an element to dc that i get that they are unrelatable <laughs> superman really is the most obvious because he's overpowered from yeah. another planet <laughs> all these things but at the same time at the core of all that is this unbreakable goodness like Superman, one of the things I always found really endearing is he comes from a different planet. He has unlimited power, but at the same time, once he met Ma and Pa Kent, you know, he fell in love with like the family and, and being a high schooler and learning how to acclimate. And so, at the end of the day, they are dealing with the same human and basic um, problems and conflicts that we have. You know, I think that's where Zach really tried to yeah. tie it all in. It's with uh, Batman vs Superman. DC fans hated. Mm -hmm. They were not about it, and it's just like, don't worry, we did too. No, no, no. My, I actually, to be honest, I actually like Batman vs Superman. It's not that bad of a movie. It's not that bad of a movie. If I'm being completely honest, like I, I, I like it better than than a couple of other movies that DC has put out. I like it better than those. <laughs> Everyone hated it. Yeah. Exactly. People were not a fan of it, but it's just like he tried to humanize these characters, yeah. and that's that's that was. It's really not a bad movie. It's, it's, it's above average. It's above average. They it's above average. To have a breaking point or yeah. be yeah. be they showed up as the villain. Fallible too. Yeah. yeah. But also going back to representation and relatability, like you know. Asian. <laughs> Not many Asian uh, superheroes, but you know, with Shang Tsung and all these other characters, I would give props to Marvel. And as long as it's not forced, you know, right. like, he said, shoved down He said right. Shang Tsung. Like, but as long as it's not forced, <laughs> like, you're going to have to Shang digest this. Yeah. And I'm all for it. When you guys did bring on Peter Parker and mm -hmm. um, Spider-Man, like that, me uh, being from New York, and so I was just like, mm -hmm. I see him and I see me. At the time, I was like, oh, you know what? I want to go to this college too, and I want to go here, and I want to do that. And then, like, you know what? Hopefully, we'll get bit by Spider on the way there. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's so, what I was saying. Like with Marvel using, you know, actual cities, like it, it, I think that that ties more into the the characters being more relatable, because you know, from New York to. Uh, what, what do you call, uh, what other city? I mean, New York is probably the, the bigger city that, that, you know, that most heroes are from. But yeah, like having that aspect with like, like not made up cities like Gotham and Metropolis and stuff like that. I think that ties more into it. I'm just like, okay, cool. I genuinely as a kid, like having what I felt like my own superhero backstory, was like losing a parent 
at a young age. Be, being kind of a caretaker to her, my mom, when I was 15, and still losing that person, it rewired in my brain many things, one of which was take care of other people and put yourself second, put everybody else first. Two, never show the crack in that it's actually crippling you trying to be perfect. Because I did always try to say, like, mm -mm, when you see me, you're going to be like, how does he just fly through life? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I thought that that's was a, that, healthy, that's, Yeah, I thought that was. I, and then once I realized that I, actually actually could be vulnerable, that I could be broken and that being broken is more beautiful and it makes you more powerful, that sort of opened up the, the, the floodgates of finding those things in the DC characters. And I think the writers, especially now in comics, are going that route. My fan community can be toxic. Both of them, both of them need to come forward. Both of them need to come forward, yeah. All of them. One dude, you want to talk one about a no-brainer question? But, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I think we can all agree that every fan right. can be toxic. Every, I mean, yeah, yeah even, at some facet, every fan can be toxic. It's something as simple as, you know, someone's title changing mm -hmm. or someone becoming a new hero. You immediately get the people on Twitter just being like, I hate this person. Mm -hmm. I honestly feel really bad for Brie Larson because she yes, got bro. the brunt of it during that whole Captain Marvel phase. Yeah, bro. Personally, I liked her. I yeah. think she's a great actress. Bro, I like the Captain Marvel movie. I like Brie Larson, bro. <laughs> like, dude, like, people really hate Captain Marvel. They do not like her, like, at all. And it's not even the character. They don't like Brie Larson either, bro. It's, it's weird, bro. I, I think she's really like, the hold on, my bad. It's, it's, it's kind of, it, to me, it's weird to blame the actor when they're just portraying a role. They're just, they're literally just doing what, they're literally just doing their job. But people, they get mad at the actor like it's their fault. They didn't write the script. They're just doing what they came there to do, act. <laughs> like, to be, be mad at the writers the or be mad at the character. Don't, don't be mad at exactly. the actual it's, it's actor. Like, when you dehumanize the actor and treat them as they're only that right that that's not being a fan yeah that's being an ass yeah. i remember when black panther came out a lot of people refused to see it because they called they said it's a pc movie exactly yeah. so it's like there's so much vitriol in different corners i like to believe it's not most people but like the loudest voices on social media are like the always, oh, always. So yeah always. exactly because those are the ones that get attention right yeah even the, the black panther anything like this is supposed to be a black superman coming out and people yeah. are gonna be yeah, like oh yeah that. that's yeah. born of the political correctness yeah. but I'm, there's, there's been iterations of yeah. black well, also it's comic books so why not yeah like, it's like it's not only it's not only limited to just white people and there's like a multiverse this. for a reason yeah, yes. a multiverse, exactly. <laughs> yeah. i get toxicity on my end just for being a girl and like oh, you guys are oh, predominantly, I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh it's all God. males. Yeah. But I mean, I've never been like directly targeted at, but I definitely do get the sense of like, oh, you're female, you don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. You have no idea. Oh, you're yeah, younger, course. you have no idea what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. I really probably could have came with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I think the only reason why I didn't was because it was prefaced by saying my community. I just, I, I'm not on Twitter, I'm not on Instagram. And so I don't, I'm, I'm ignorant to it, I guess is what it is. I had a weird situation. You know, I would be, I guess, more in the jock category growing up in the sense of that was more, more my reputation, I would suppose. But anyone who knew me and any of my friends came over to my house, like when I started dating, like in high school and then girls came over to my house, I had action figures everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you know, so, so the jig was up, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, this is really who I am and what I'm really about. And, and okay. I always found yeah, like, that's a, a W, that's a W though. Like, I think if, if people buy too much into the, the, the toxic nature of, of Marvel versus DC or whatever the movie is and their gripes on it, they're losing a chance to focus on the positive of the character and why yeah, they love exactly. it. Exactly, but people just My be focused on negatives. would win in a fight. <laughs> I'm walking, I'm going for it. Oh, too. They, they, they know too. They know. <laughs> it's good. They know. They know what's Bro, it's bro. It's cause Superman, bro. Like this dude is unbeatable. Literally, he's unbeatable. No kryptonite. No, you no stopping him. Literally, no stopping him at all. Then they got people like Dark Side and like if you were to like have all the villains and heroes to get. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. DC stumps, bro. DC stumps for sure. I ain't gonna lie. I think that's why the, the conversation is, is, is Marvel connects more with like the real person because DC does feel like Titans, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And to me, comic books are American mythology. I heard that somewhere in a documentary and it's true. You know, we don't have like an American mythos outside of like Paul Bunyan and like some silly stuff. It's superheroes is yeah. really what it is. Yeah. And Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, these like, you know, Atlas holding the world on their shoulders figures. So it's like, it's always them. 
Batman's like plan to defeat everyone is just I'm Batman. Yeah. And everyone on Earth goes, he's right. Yeah. Get out of the way. <laughs> he's Batman. Yeah. yeah. You get down to the to the brass of it, you know, a pissed off Superman. Good luck. Someone, <laughs> so, so, someone taking out the big dog. You know. So I always see these videos on YouTube, like, oh yeah, Superman versus Hulk, or Batman versus Iron Man. And it's like it's all made up. Right. People have their own. Uh, and listen, until Superman fights Goku, we know that's the real. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, another thing I've seen, like I watched Death Battle Superman versus Goku, and that that honestly, I already knew Superman would beat Goku. Like in my opinion, I feel like Superman could beat Goku. But watching that video by Death Battle, like that 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 only furthered my opinion of Superman being Goku. Superman can watch Goku easily. I don't want to hear it at all. <laughs> I mean, this isn't even a question. <laughs> like, the Justice League is way overpowered. <laughs> like, way overpowered. Right. I would just say their brutality is a lot more severe compared to Marvel characters. That was, like, the only thing that came to mind. I was saying the MCU is a little bit more light and fluffy, so they have a little bit more humanistic, like, thoughts. Um, and I just feel like they would completely just destroy them, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. I, I guess my only question would be, you know, if you want to pit you know, one person against another person, you know, mm -hmm. The whole argument that I hear a lot with, you know, DC fans is Batman with prep time. With prep time. Yeah. <laughs> Always wins. What is that argument? <laughs> because he's just the dude. <laughs> I've never made that argument because honestly the argument is usually he's already had the prep time. Okay. Yeah. That's always the twist. Is so you just like, assume he's already figured it Batman's out? Batman's prepared for every pot. Like, yeah. his mind is like, I've calculated 17 he's million to be outcomes. Prepared, yeah. like, if he's they, Doctor Strange, essentially. He's Doctor Strange. The time. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, okay. if they were together in a movie and Doctor Strange was like, I saw these outcomes, he'd be like, Yeah, I did too. Yeah. <laughs> and as a reader, too, not just a viewer, I do get bored of that. You know what I mean? Because then there's almost no stakes. So it's like Batman knew all along. I was like, Oh, cool. So it wasn't even. It didn't even matter, you know? What I liked about Infinity War and the Snyder Cut was the level of dread you felt for the characters yeah. and what they were having to go through in order to get to their goal. And their goal was not ultimately met, especially with Infinity I got so emotional at Infinity War, and my head literally hurt after Yes, bro, I'm but telling you. Having the character, I was little, character I was, be vulnerable. Bro, yeah. I'm sorry. Hey, hey, spoiler, spoiler. If you haven't seen Infinity War by now, what are you doing? What are you doing? If you haven't seen any MCU movies, what are you doing? But, dude, when Black Widow died, I literally cried. Well, I didn't cry, cry. I didn't, like, full-on cry, but tears started falling down, bro. And then I seen everybody start fading away, and I was like, bro, what in the world, bro? What is going on? Bro, it was just, a, it was, emo I was an emotional wreck, bro. I ain't gonna cap. I ain't gonna cap. Like not having them at their peak mm -hmm. is very important for the audience to be able to relate and to be able to feel for the characters. Right. Marcus Scorsese said Marvel movies are not cinema. Step forward if you agree. Now step forward if you disagree. That's Scorsese said that? Well, what does he know about making movies? <laughs> <laughs> right? I think we all are going to disagree pretty heavy with that one if you look at not just the numbers and not just the worldwide success, but also the stories and the emotions and the ebb and flow of, of if a movie gets you to cry it's cinema bro. cinematic but some <laughs> of the it's best cinema, examples bro. of art that a worldwide audience of different ages and a lot of different people can come together and watch and enjoy you know where maybe sometimes a more boutique or arty film yeah. might not have that same feeling so yeah i think the second you try to put ground rules on what art is you fundamentally don't understand you're missing the point of art yeah. Yeah. absolutely For sure. like how do you define cinema Right. You can't. Right. There's no, you know, cookie cutter definition of, oh, okay, this movie is cinema, but like Shrek Two is not. Like, it's, it's high the, cinema. The high cinema. cinema. <laughs> but it's it's that type of thing where if you decide that things have limits, you're already not only limiting the audience, but you're limiting creative freedom. You know, if someone you're comes limiting yourself from actually cinema, enjoying what are you it future filmmakers too. that what they want to do is yeah. not considered mm -hmm. cinema, right. you're immediately, you know, trashing what these new people want to do. It brings people together is yeah. the biggest thing. I think a cinema can do that. Yeah, here we go. Uh, I mean, me and my dad watch it together. Me and my mom, me and my friends, and we're all different ages. Mm -hmm. That's like the point of cinema, mm -hmm. so. Of course. Group hug, group hug, everybody. Group hug, group hug. Group hug, ah, W. W video, W video, oh my god. Oh, yeah. Good conversation. Good job, boys. Yeah, I love that. Well. You know, oh dang, my camera turned off. <laughs> my camera turned off. But uh, 
my camera my is my 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 camera not gonna turn back on? You said you said no for sure. Hold up, y'all. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, y'all, uh, <clears throat> thank y'all for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, uh, if you liked it, drop a like for me, subscribe if you're new, follow all my links in the description, my, uh, to my Discord, follow my Twitch, my Instagram, my Twitter, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, you know, uh, Marvel and DC, whether you want to pit them against each other or not, like, they both make absolutely good movies. Yeah, uh, not even just movies, just good everything, like, I love it, I love to see it. But uh, yeah, hope y'all enjoyed this video. Um, I love y'all. I'm gonna see y'all in the next one. Peace.